wanted to chat with you about the shit that you do, especially like the audio visual space. Um, so I'm doing this residency with uh, We Are Lilies, Borley, Corner Them, and I thought it would be like a perfect opportunity to just chop it up with sure. you, recording some of the stuff that you've done recently. But for someone sure. who doesn't know you and who would be listening to my show for the first time, please introduce yourself. Um, yeah, man, thanks for having me. I'm Fernando Damon. I'm a musician, drummer, composer from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, and yeah, this is what I do, man. I do music. I do a bit of composition work when I get asked to um uh yeah i don't know man i've just been doing a lot of interesting stuff i guess in the world of sound um yeah i, I love it in your introduction when you said you're fernanda damon from south africa because the one thing i admire about your work man is like the diversity of your catalog and i think also it's important to always remind people that as much as like you're from south africa you're doing all of these things with all of these people from different parts of the world so is it always like intention are you always intentional when you plan out or when you think of your dreams to diversify as much as you have over the years yeah man i think i think um you know being in music um i like i don't i wouldn't consider myself like the best musician per se and i wouldn't consider myself the best like um i mean as i get older i don't think i'm the best at like interacting with people the way maybe i i usually the way i'd like to so um i don't know with the type of music i'm not just interested in but the type of music i'm making i think the audience yeah the audience is a bit vast and so I'm kind of constantly playing to the people that might um, like it, you know, I'm not really playing to, um, and I guess spreading and setting my sights outside of South Africa in different pockets. Um, yeah, I guess is has been very helpful for in, in my journey so far. Mm. Um, I guess I'm less like particular now about who I work with and, and what I do. But yeah, I think I'm also just grateful with for the people that reach out to me and, and want to use me on their projects. Mm -hmm. um, so it may seem that I'm also like very expansive, but I think I also get a lot of opportunity. And so making use of that, um, I guess, allows the music to travel, you know. No, I feel you, bro. I, it, it, kind of, it feels weird when you say that, like, as you grow, you find it weird interacting with people. Because the other, the other thing that I've always, like, admired about you and I take from myself is how you're able to not, like, look at someone and be like, oh, this person is of this stature, so I can't really communicate with them. Like, bro, like, just, yeah. you, 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 bro, like, I have so much respect for you in like how you move dude like for you it's never about who the person is where they're from what race they are it's all about the energies of the music and what you can put yeah, together man. with that person and it's evident with the stuff that you've done with teal street as well uh how's that going Thank you. like um anything else that you want to share maybe future stuff you're always busy with yeah. something. yeah so um funny enough like uh when you messaged me last week, I actually just got my my flights for um, for Luanda. Mm. I was actually gonna ask you if you could look after me for the twenty eighth. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, like Teal Street is Teal Street is obviously my um, my imprint and my brainchild. And having worked with other labels, um, you know, a lot of guys motivated me to to start it and like to start my own stable but the thing is like we, the music i think i'm doing my best to make it not commercially viable mm -hmm. and so that more of the projects are more um uh i kind of don't want to tie into your next question because i did read your questions but the fourth um release is about to uh, is dropping next week which is actually the work that i had done in luanda 
um, with my trio over there. So um, I have some like physical city cassette tapes um, released next week. And like my intention with Teal Street is that each release and whatever, whoever the artist is I work with, to also have a physical release. And I guess this also really now slows down how often I release music. Um, but yeah, it was just like an idea to have a stable of like good, honest music that I can control. Like I get to control the visual output, what it looks like. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but essentially Teal Street is just like my label, like after seeing just our labels, I guess, um, you know, mess with artists and I guess like don't really give them creative freedom mm -hmm. um, with their work, mm -hmm. which is something I'm actually dealing with, you know, which I can't really discuss on here. Sure. But I'm having that sure. problem now with some, some people overseas. So, yeah, it's just like, um, yeah, it's a good outlet for me to you know, also in future release more music that I'm into. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just been some, it's been really nice to like just curate, I guess, and like do something a little different. Mm. Now I feel you, bro. You honestly <laughs> like perfectly gave me more than I wanted as well. Sure. Like, um, <laughs> you've also like, I think the bulk of this conversation is inspired by your audiovisual collaborations. Um, you've worked with some of your friends at earlier stages and like you've grown over the years. Could you maybe speak about like um, that part of you and your process? Yeah. Um, like, obviously, I think, you know, when I was younger, I was putting out a lot of music. I wouldn't say blindly, but I, I was just sharing music. I guess maybe a lot of people had known of what I was sharing at a certain time. But I've always had people like um, Jesse, Jesse Chitter, and and uh, I mean, there's a lot of other guys. But just in terms of people helping me with like whether it's an artwork or whether it's shooting something um, off the cuff, it's kind of just the idea that when I have, you know, when you, uh, I think I've spoken to you about this before. But when you creatively incline, sometimes you can't let things sit, you know. So if I want to like put something in a vacuum in a moment of time, I have to kind of get it done. I might get over the work. I might feel differently about it. And so I think the guys that I work with for those like, you know, uh, I mean, I'm also fortunate that there are people that are willing to work with me. Uh, shout out to Malone. Uh, Jason Prince, Jesse, um, there's a lot of other people, but I guess, uh, how can I fucking say this now? Uh, I like, yeah, it's like things I'm feeling in the moment and I'm like, can we do this? And if we can do it, we try and do it and I try and like shelf it, you know? Mm. So I think that's what I think about my audio visual journey and then there's obviously things that that um is also another part, side of my work which is like um composing and writing jingles and stuff for ads and and i think that also expands my portfolio as a musician it like legitimizes my me just wanting to play actually but uh yeah it's like earned me some money i've been able to do some things through that but it's just people i guess who really believe or also probably just as crazy as i am mm -hmm. um ideally and so yeah i guess like you know if you share enough of yourself people people feel that um you know you could maybe help them with whatever it is mm -hmm. so i think that's things that are very they've mostly been very quick you know um, I mean, should I speak about the film that had just come out now? Yeah, you can touch on that as well, like your latest <laughs> contribution towards Mzonge's film, Jerry. No, like, like, 
um so 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 they were kind of wrapping up this anthology and um and i'd seen him zonke and he was like yo man i really want you to work on this film but like so someone previously already started working on the film and then um someone had already started working on the film and i mean on the film um the same guy that actually worked on three of the other films in the anthology and obviously um zonke being um zonke wanted the tone and the picture to be different you know he didn't really like what the previous guy had been doing so basically before they had to submit this thing i had like 2 weeks to do the score and obviously um me being put on the job last there were like budget constraints and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. um but anyway i i thought that i booked studio with a trio like of guys i hadn't played with so basically like i used the opportunity to to mess around i mean he he gave me the um he gave me free reign on what i needed to do but i had watched the film um previously you know we were sitting around we watched the film and we had gone for beers and i watched the film again and so like the film kind of just gave me you know the picture gives you a a palette mm. and so um there's a guy Josh Lipman from Joburg actually and he hadn't played his trumpet in so long mm. but he'd been wanting to to um you know jam and, and stuff so i thought flip by this guy um, I asked him to send me a, a voice note of him like playing a line and basically it sounded like he was he was like um like wailing man you know like out of practice mm. and i was like man this is oh. perfect so i brought him into a session and then a bassist so he essentially put together the trio and i like wrote um like themes you know of how i wanted to start a track and then we kind of just improvised after like how i started mm. so like my cues for the film because it's such a powerful film like obviously mzonke is the probably the best we have in south africa it's a bit of bias but also i mean if you haven't seen his work like he's an amazing director and mc and you know just all around mind and so the film is like crazy it like mixes french and salsa and um it's a very sad film also about like i guess what happens in in some churches you know where like these pastors are like reviving people from the dead you know and it's so obviously it has this comical aspect to it but it's like yeah super fo- powerful and so i thought the tone was like jazz you know mm-hmm. um just because i knew the the previous guy that had worked on it and i i kind of know what he was going to do with the film and so i just recorded these suites for some of the cues in the film um with a three piece and yeah like put the film together and it, it started like um yeah like it's been they've been running around like played at the New York African Film Festival I was like the main film there which was amazing and just premiered in Cape Town also for the first time at the Labia and yeah the response is really good and i think it's just nice to like I guess score like a film you know like I I hope to do big like feature films in future um but like the just to end that I don't want to talk too much but <clears throat> one of these um I'm trying to think now I was going to ask my buddy now but this guy says like in order to collab- like in film your collaborators need to have like the same amount of freedom and so i think it was just allowing me to somewhat do anything you know and like just yeah so much belief in me that i guess 
he would, may have been happy with anything I did, but just like um, I wanted it to be special and and not like sit with the music and writing some stuff myself. It needed a bit of human movement and feel. So, yeah, that's how that came about, and it's really beautiful, man. Like, um, I don't know if it will be available to the public, like as time goes. Um, because there's a lot of things happening with the film also that I can't really speak about. But it's just cool to be part of these things sometimes. Oh, cool. now I'm hoping I can yeah. you know, see it like you know privately or some shit at some point. But yeah, man, like that's, yeah, yeah. I try to get it to you. I can try to get it to you. Yeah, and I think also maybe at a later stage it might be dope to talk to him, Umzonke, about that film because he's mm. doing like dope stuff as well. So, bro, like, yeah. like I, I opened this conversation speaking to you and being uh, about you being a nomad and a creative and someone who's expansive. You also have ties in Luanda recently. You traveled there and you made some work titled Phase One. Could you make me speak a bit about that and like the video that came, came along with that work? Sure. So, um, so I started a, a trio in Luanda and we had played a couple shows and and then went into studio and kind of recorded like this one take um you know about an hour and a half of music we were just playing for an hour and a half and then i um so my plan was to come back to cape town and make these tapes um and so phase one essentially was like the phase one, like the first phase of this body of work, which drops next week. Um, and the trio consists of like an amazing guitarist, Santa Ana, Xiao Ana from Port uh, Portugal, but he's Angolan as well. Um, super crazy, experimental, like, um, yeah, just a real crazy guy, man. Like chaotic guitarist, and then a percussionist, um, Luis Pedro. And these guys are kind of connected me with a lot of musicians in my stay there, and kind of um, you know facilitated jams and stuff at a place called Hotel Globo, which is like a very it's like an artist residency space, I guess, but. Um, yeah, we'd go in there to jam most of the weekends and, you know, twice or thrice a week there was a jam happening. And so it's like I was very inspired by how quickly some of these things could be set up, like if we wanted, if I wanted them to. And like being from a city like Cape Town, like there's so much access to so many things, but you don't necessarily do it, you know. I think everyone is still very... I'm going to do this with my people and like um, I'm probably really guilty of that myself but yeah it was just I guess the idea of being in a new place you know the history the tight history between South Africa and Angola um, yeah it was so good I'm actually going back there next week <laughs> for another month and it's just nice to be like like um, I don't know put in real uncomfortable situations and forces me to think about a lot. So I like went to the little camera I got from a friend and I also like just wanted to record things on my stay. And I also like just put out, I had so much emotion when I got back that I needed to put it into a thing. So I kind of just um, edited this, all the footage I got there so and put out... <laughs> Yeah, I put out a video with some tracks that'll never come out, you know. And so, like, just to get people thinking, like, I don't know, is this something or is it nothing? Um, and, like, yeah, I guess just toying with, like, the idea of um, also think wondering why South African musicians don't necessarily tour Africa um, was a, a thought that is kind of... Um, I've been 
you know, also asking some of the guys, like some of my favorite South African musicians. And I think it's maybe just they don't think that they can. And maybe, you know, Berlin is like more viable or the UK, um, which is always going to be there, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, it's just been very interesting. And I think I'm also lucky to have met some people that have been able to facilitate some things for me and um, just make me feel welcome and like yeah like to speak a new language you know and the language barrier is a bit tough it's like these things are yeah just for your growth you know I think I came back a better musician mm. so like maybe if you want to add like and maybe some of the inspirations that you felt the space contributed towards mm. you as a person and just like um as a musician as well yeah like um you know i was staying on a on a place called Ilia, which is like the island <clears throat> and so basically the, the way i grew up like going to the beach okay we live near the beach obviously but going to a beach is like um like okay we're going to the beach like let's pack a bag and go to the beach and put on get swimming trunks and stuff you know mm-hmm. and so the beach the place i was staying in is like surrounded by water so it's a literal island and and uh you know a couple hundred meters before the end of the yeah i was staying a couple hundred meters before the end of the island which is called um ponto final Mm-hmm. And so it's basically mm-hmm. like um, the final point is what it's called. And like, I don't know, it's like very cult- like culturally rich. So basically it's this like end of an island and they're like people selling beers and like super, I wouldn't say like, uh, I'll use the word like favela, but it's like very raw, real, like, you go to the end of the island to get cheap beers and stuff, you know, and, and so just like learning how this works, the fact that people earn their living by like going out on a boat and catching fish and, you know, and the fact that like the sea and the beach is so normal and like there's basically like just a strip. It's, yeah, you know, like people spend their lives on this, on this beach, man. And in the city, like being super crowded, you get around on like bikes, you know, it's like just different to Cape Town. Like, you know, we Ubering here and they, they are Uber services over there, but yeah, it's just inspiring to like, like, wow, like people live like this also, you know, mm. I feel you. the you know the upper class of people the middle to um, upper middle class people live like really good lives like you know and then from where i am back home i mean where i am right now it's like it's very different you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i guess we okay like we have a roof over our head but the people on the street are like eating really well and so I always wonder, you know, they also have electricity and like, <laughs> um, yeah, it just made me feel really like, like I, I, I was missing. It was also the first time I left um, the country. So mm. yeah, I, uh, yeah, it just really changed my perspective of like how I'd like to live my life. Um, and then I guess if people think you are like worthy of, of if you think you're worthy of anything, like you should go for whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a change, yeah, like, you know, taking a bike from the island was pretty, it's away from everything else. So you up on a bike, you walk for, up the road, you get on the back of a bike and it's super normal. And these guys drive like through traffic and you just like, I don't know if you're going to survive the drive, you know, because the guys are really, um, yeah, it's like some pretty rough stuff, but it was so nice. Like, um, 
Yeah, I guess like you pick up certain things that they say. You know, I guess they're also a Portuguese colony, so everyone speaks Portuguese. Mm. But um, you know, there's just certain things like, like a man Malone always say rings, man. You know, mm. see rings, like when there's rings, and so they have. Yeah, it's like a. The people, it's like a type of Creole that I felt super close to. So, um, yeah, man, I like just playing music to people who like don't really know you. Mm. Like, made me motivated me to like play live music again um, because I stopped doing that for a little while just to, I guess, better myself, you know, as a, a musician. So, yeah, man, like it's just trying to do something different the fact that it sounds differently you know i'm playing you know when i'm sad yeah it sounds different to when i'm sad over there and playing a lick you know and licking the drum so when i'm happy it sounds different because like the air is different so yeah man it's just like a beautiful place i'm going back for a month um next week and i have some more some more things I'm trying to do, you know, I'm, I'm not done yet. So, oh. yeah, just, oh. yeah. I know, I know. I'll send you a tape yeah, also, yeah. Please, I'll man, because like, I want to include some of the sounds <laughs> to this chat. But I also know that you don't like sharing too much. You're a show and tell type of person. You don't pre, <laughs> yeah, pre, yeah, pre niggas. You just show niggas what you do. <laughs> and that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, you don't broadcast your shit. You just release it. Man, man, I want to wish you all the best uh, when you go back to Luanda. Um, Thank you, man. Make more Thank great you. shit. And I'm hoping I'll see more audio stuff. I mean, visual stuff coming from, from yeah. that room and your collaboration. Yeah. Also, uh, yeah, thanks to like Jason Prince and Conway um, C Flex who performed and did the movement in the last video we put out. Mm. Um, he was just like <clears throat> happy to to shoot something um, when I came back with the music. And uh, we just spoke about it. The three of us got together and essentially just shot that in a in a in a squash court, you know, like back here. And I guess Conway just took the inspiration of the music and the movement and kind of just did his thing, man. So that's how that came about. Mm -hmm. So there'll be more of that. Like, I mean, I'm recording a lot more live performance stuff when I go there now. So, yeah, there's just like a long rollout of music that I'm very excited to to share, you know, because I feel like I'm, I'm kind of approaching it very differently. So, yeah, man, thank you very much for having me. No stress for And, me. yeah, it's nice to catch up with you, old friend. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no. 